I've made a lot of videos here on the channel about all the things that the iPhone can do, but I've not really covered the iPad with the same level of detail, which is a shame because iPads are really capable when you know how to use them. So in this video, I'm gonna share eight iPad tips and tricks with you, and I bet there's at least a few in here that you didn't know. Okay, let's get into it. There's way more to the iPad keyboard than you probably realize, especially because there's a bunch of things that you can do on here that you can't do on your iPhone. For starters, you can make the keyboard big or small by using the same pinch and push motion that you use on photos. This can be useful if you're holding the iPad in portrait mode, for example, and maybe you find the full screen keyboard just a bit too big. Just pinch to make it small. When you're done, push out like I'm showing you on screen now to make it full size again. This is known as the floating keyboard, and when the keyboard is floating, you can drag it around using the little marker at the bottom of the keyboard. But if you find the pinch and push motion too difficult, just tap and hold for a moment on the button at the bottom right of the keyboard, and you can choose floating from here. Oh, and also, if you like swipe typing, where you just move your finger around the screen from letter to letter as your method of typing, you can do that if you enable the floating keyboard. It won't work when the keyboard is docked. Another really useful feature here is the split keyboard, where the keyboard splits out into a left side and right side with a split down the middle. When you're holding the iPad, it might make it easier to get your thumbs to all the different keys, depending on your hands and grip, obviously. I've got this working on my iPad mini, but for some reason this feature isn't on the iPad Pro. When I looked online, it seems like the entire Pro lineup has missed out on this feature. I've no idea why. Oh, and finally, a keyboard hack on the iPad that you might not have realized, but it's right under your nose, is swiping down on a key to get the alternative option for that key. So here, for example, you can see that if I tap on the letter E, it will, of course, input an E. But if I swipe down a little, it will input the number three, because you can see that this is the alternative option for that key. You can see that you have numbers on the top row and then symbols on the rows below that. Unlike your iPhone, your iPad is a pretty good can I borrow device. What I mean by that is that I reckon you're more likely to have friends and family ask if they can quickly borrow your iPad than they are your phone. You might be totally okay with this, but you also might want to restrict what those people can do when they've got your device. If this is the case, use guided access. On your iPad, go to settings, then accessibility, and scroll down until you reach the general section. Here, tap into guided access. Start by toggling the feature on. Next, head to an app that you'd like to use this feature for. So I've done this for Netflix, but you could of course do this for whatever app you like. Next, you're gonna begin the guided access feature, which on an iPad mini, which is the iPad that I'm using for this demonstration, is done by tapping the top button three times. I think this is generally the method used for most iPads, but you might have to go back to guided access in settings to check for your device. You see that when I do this, the window shrinks a little and I have some options around the edges of the screen. If you tap on options in the lower left, you can choose whether you'd like to allow or disallow control over the things shown here. So if you enable volume buttons, for example, the person that you hand the device to will still be able to raise and lower the volume using the buttons. If you're giving this to a kid to play with on a flight, for example, you might wanna disable this function. When you're ready, choose start in the top right of the screen. If you're prompted to input a passcode, do so and ensure that you can remember it as you'll need it to switch this feature off. The device will at first appear to be functioning as usual, but it's actually locked into this one app along with any other restrictions that you chose from options. So if someone tries to swipe away to come out of this app to perhaps go looking in your email or photos or messages, for example, they can't. When you're done, triple tap the button at the top of the screen, confirm using the passcode you would have put in when you set this up and choose end. Whenever I show this to people, especially parents, it's a genuine light bulb moment for them and it works really well, so why not give it a go? Of course, if you're sitting here thinking that guided access isn't really for you, but you think that the triple tap of the top button function could be really handy, you should check out accessibility. If you go into settings, then accessibility, and then accessibility shortcut, you can choose what a triple tap of the top button of your iPad will do. You can see that for me, this is currently set as guided access because that's what I was just using, but you can also see that there are lots of options that I can choose from here instead. In my opinion, the best setting that you can choose from in this list is assistive touch. With this feature enabled, you can triple tap the top button of your iPad and you'll see this small home screen-like button appear on your screen. You can tap and hold to drag this anywhere on the screen. And when you tap on it, you can see that you have a number of options to choose from. 
so you might want to quickly access the control center or access Siri or take a screenshot. All of those are just one button click away, which is really useful if you find a lot of gestures on your iPad difficult. But then if you go back to accessibility, then tap into touch, then choose assistive touch, then tap on customize top level menu, you can begin to shape what this menu looks like when you tap on this button. You can see the six buttons that represent what the button is currently able to do. But if I tap the plus button, I now have an additional one to play with. I'll tap into it and I can then choose from loads of different functions for it. So I might choose camera, for example. And now when I tap on the assistive touch button, you can see that I can quickly access the camera as well. There's even an option in here for shortcuts, which takes this to a whole other level of advanced use, as you can program some really interesting shortcuts that you can then run at the touch of a button. The iPad is increasingly becoming a legit tool for getting serious work done for your business. And something else that's vital for your business is a good password manager, ideally one that's targeted to business users. And that's where NordPass comes in, who are sponsoring today's video. Think about you and your colleagues or your employees if you run a business and be honest, out of all the websites that everyone in your company visits each day, how many of the usernames and passwords do you think are stored in a spreadsheet on someone's desktop or written in a notebook or worse still, on a post-it note stuck to someone's laptop screen? Or what if someone in your team is off on leave next week and they just realize that they need to give somebody else login details for while they're away? They're probably gonna text them, aren't they? Or maybe email them. Either way, you're asking for trouble. NordPass understands this problem and their solution makes it easy for you to not only ensure that your team are creating and using suitably complex passwords when they're logging into websites, but it also makes it really easy for anyone to securely share credentials with someone else in the business. So now next time Sharon from marketing is going away for a week, she can grant access to the company Facebook account to the rest of the team without putting the entire business at risk. Oh, and if your employees' credentials payment information, emails, or company domains have been compromised in a breach, breach monitoring will proactively scan the web 24 seven and notify you in real time. It takes businesses on average 250 days to identify a data breach caused by compromised credentials. So the quicker you know about these things, the quicker you can take action. NordPass is all this plus so much more. So if securing your business effortlessly sounds good to you, why not give them a try? Sign up via the link in the description of this video to get three months free access using the activation code HONESTTECH. I've talked a lot on the channel about how you can scan documents into notes and they become PDFs embedded within a note, but you might not want this. You might literally just want to create a PDF scan of something either to keep or to share. You can do this really easily using the files app. Open the files app and navigate to the folder where you'd like to insert the scan. Here's a handy tip. If you have a Mac that you'd like to be able to immediately view this file on, it might be a good idea to choose iCloud Drive on the left and then choose desktop. That's because so long as you've got iCloud Sync enabled on all of your devices, anything that you scan here on your iPad will immediately show up on your Mac's desktop as well. Tap and hold for just a second somewhere in the screen until the contextual menu appears. Choose Scan Documents. The camera of your iPad will open. You can toggle between auto and manual scan on the right. Manual literally means that you have to hit the shutter button while auto will attempt to figure out when a document is present and capture it by itself. This is the best mode for most people, I think. If you tap the flash button, you can set this to either auto, on or off. And if you tap the button below that, you can choose the type of scan that you're performing to match your document. Once you've captured the scan, tap on the preview at the bottom of the screen. You can crop or rotate the image as well as change the type of scan. If this is a multi-page document, just keep scanning until you've captured all of the pages that you need. When you're ready, tap the save button in the lower right of the screen. Once saved, the PDF will show in the folder you chose. You can immediately change the name of the scan if you wish, and then that's it, you've created the PDF. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots and you can access it along with all the other PDFs that I've created plus future ones for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. I reckon most iPad owners have no idea how to properly multitask on their device. You might already know about Split View, which is one of the ways that you can multitask on your iPad. To do this, open the first app that you'd like to have in Split View and tap the three dots button that you can see at the top of the screen. You would then choose Split View. 
the app shifts over to one side of the screen, but then kind of completely disappears. And this is because you now need to choose the second app that you'd like as part of your split view. So I've got Safari open. I might choose Notes as my next app, and I do that simply by tapping on the Notes app. Each of the two apps function as you'd expect within their now smaller windows, and you can use the control in the middle of the screen to resize the two windows. But one of the great features here is that you can drag and drop from one app right into the other. So for example, if I'm working on a research project and I find an image that I'd like to include in a note, I can just drag it and drop it from Safari right into my note. If I'm interested in a passage of text, I can select it, choose copy, and then paste it straight into the other side. Also, look how easy it is to move text. I've selected a passage of text in Safari. I'll then tap and hold on it for just a second and drag it right into my note. Also, what I really like about working in split screen mode like this is that you can have multiple views of each app and bounce between them in what Apple called the shelf. So let's say I'm working on this note, but I might need to bounce between this and another note. Tap the three dots button at the top of the note side of the window, and you'll notice down at the bottom of the screen, there's a plus button called new window. Tap on this, and you can then choose the other note that you want to view. Repeat the process to bounce between multiple open notes. And you can do this in Mail, Safari, pretty much whatever app you're working in. Split view is good, but what if you find that it's making things too small to get any proper work done, but you still like being able to bounce through the apps? Well, let's say that you're working on a specific note. Tap and hold on it for just a moment and choose Open in New Window. This opens the note in a window that takes up most of the center of the screen, giving you plenty of space to work with. You can close that window using the Close button, or you can tap out of it and the view will move down to the shelf at the bottom of the screen. Oh, and just to make sure that you can use this feature, go to Settings and choose Multitasking and Gestures. In the Multitasking window at the top of the screen, ensure that split view and slide over is enabled. If you go into settings, then multitasking and gestures, scroll down and enable swipe finger from corner. You can then choose from two options for each swipe. You can either use it to create a screenshot or start a quick note, or you can disable the function. So why might you wanna do this? Well, in the instance of screenshots, taking a screenshot on the iPad is kind of a pain. You have to pinch both the top volume button and the top button on the iPad at the same time. So instead, you can use this setting to just swipe up from the bottom left or right of the screen to capture a screenshot. So much easier. While we're on the topic of screenshots, let me show you a few really great tips for better marking up your screenshots. So I'm sure you know that if you tap on one of the pen icons, you can use it to circle around something on your screenshot, for example. But did you know that if you draw a circle, for example, and then hold at the end of the circle, your iPad will turn it into a perfect shape? This works for squares and triangles too. It also works for arrows, which I know is something you're gonna to want to do in markup quite frequently. You do this by drawing the arrow line, then swiping back a little and holding there. This will create a perfect arrow. It also works on the highlighter. I'm sure we've all tried to highlight a line of text and got annoyed when we end up only getting a part of it because we've drawn a wonky line. So if you draw the line and then hold, your iPad will neaten it up for you. And once you've drawn a shape, you can then tap the selector tool and draw around it to select it like an object. You can then move that object around on the screen. So if you need to position it a bit better, that's easy to do. The eraser tool is there and we all know that it's great for getting rid of something that you might have drawn by mistake. But if you tap on it a second time after initially selecting it, you can see that you've got the choice of pixel eraser or object eraser. The default is pixel eraser, but if you choose object eraser, you can then just swipe on an object to erase the entire thing rather than having to erase it bit by bit. It's really useful. Oh, and when you've created a screenshot, if you tap share up at the top of the screen, notice that you can tap on options. This is a screenshot, so the only real option here is to choose the name of the file. But if you go back and change this to a full page screenshot instead, then choose share and then choose options, you can see that you can choose to send this as an image or as a PDF document. So long as you're using an iPad that runs iPadOS 17 and your iPad has a USB-C input, you can use an external webcam with your iPad. When you consider that there are thousands of webcams out there that run off of USB-C, this gives you lots of options. In terms of why you might wanna do this, the answer is simple, quality. The quality of any USB-C webcam is always gonna be significantly better than the webcam installed in your iPad. 
And the beauty of this is that you don't need to install any drivers or download any software. The webcam should just work the moment that you plug it in. I've got this working here with the Insta360 Link webcam. This isn't a sponsored mention, by the way. This is just a webcam that I've been using for a long time now and really enjoy. The only issue with this is that it's down to the individual software creators to support the functionality. Zoom, for example, did roll out support for this in December 2023. So hopefully if you're using third-party video conferencing, you're supported. Did you know that if you have any spare Bluetooth devices lying around, like a Bluetooth mouse, keyboard, or even an Apple trackpad, you can pair them with your iPad and use them to control your iPad. Put your Bluetooth device in pairing mode, and on your iPad, go to Bluetooth and look for the device in this window. Tap on it to pair. I've got this working with an Apple Magic Mouse, keyboard, and trackpad that I've got spare, and they all work great. You can then go to Settings and General, and if you've paired something, you'll see the relevant options in here, like keyboard or trackpad and mouse. You can then configure things like the direction of the scroll wheel and whether or not you can use right-click. You can even pair a games controller. So if you've got a spare PS4 or PS5 controller, perhaps, you can pair that to your iPad and use it for any games that you might want to download and play. So there you go, eight amazing things that you can do on your iPad. How many did you know? Any in here that caught you by surprise? Or were there any that you think should have been included here? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.